Okie dokie. I think we're live, y'all. Now, I, I said I was going to give it a few minutes. Here we go. <clears throat> As you can see, I've done just a very, very uh, rough sketch of a uh, brook trout. Now, I'm trying to give it an opportunity for some folks to come on. I know it's only been 28 seconds, and I kind of sprung this on people because, <laughs> you know, I like to surprise people. So... The brook trout, for those who don't know, the brook trout is a beautiful little fish. It's it's one of the smaller trouts, I guess, I suppose. It uh, looks like a jewel box. They like cold water um, streams. They're, they're, uh, you can find them here in East Tennessee, North Carolina. They're all over the place, but they've become a little bit more rare. They're not as... Um, you know, they, they're very, they're, their environment is very specific to their, to their needs. And so they are a little bit more fragile, I suppose, of, as far as trout go, but they're beautiful. They look like little jewel boxes. Uh, I see I got one person on here today. So uh, thank you for joining me. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so as far as the palette that I put down, just so you know, the substrate that we're working on today is a super slick uh, gessoed panel. And it's, and I'll show you here, you can see it's a thick you know, it's got a thick edge on it because I sometimes don't like to frame all my pieces. So it's it's nice because it offers, it's got a lot of substance to it. This is an eight by 10. And uh, I just did a very, very loose sketch of this little tri trout on here. Um, as far as the color palette, I'm gonna go ahead and show you right here. Um, uh, so this is Hooker's Green. This is by Windsor Newton. This is Michael Harding's, um, Raw Umber, this color, and it's a Sennelier color, and I'm trying to remember, it's like green earth. This is ivory black, I'm sorry, I'm kind of going off here. Um, this is yellow lake, this is Michael Harding, this is Michael Harding's um, Burnt Sienna. This is Blue Ridge's um, Mars Red. I have Michael Harding's, uh, and it's, all my colors are kind of blah, they're melting here. This is Michael Harding's King's Blue. Uh, Blue Ridge's um, Ultramarine Blue, and Titanium White by Windsor Newton. So that's what I'm going to start with. Um, and I'm just going to set this right here so I can get some paint on here. I'm not really sure how long I'll be painting today. Um, I'm just going to paint. I've got students coming in. and uh, But I wanted to go ahead and jump in and do something fun. I don't know. I've been kind of... Somebody, somebody mentioned to me yesterday. They said, you know, Sue, do you ever paint fish? And I'm like... I have, but I haven't in a while. And so I kind of want to do this. Um, so I'm going to mix, since what, what I see on my reference is predominantly a green, very dark green fish. So I'm mixing a little bit of the um, Hooker's Green with the Sennelier color. Let me see if I can find it for you so I can tell you again what the color actually is. And I'm trying to find it, and I don't see it. Oh, here. Oops, no, that's not it. Anyway, it's um, it's just an earthy green. Now, if you if you know that the this fish has lots of little spots on it, and I'm going to paint the spots later, so I'm just going to kind of go in here with this very, um, and I'm using this brush happens to be a number three long flat. It's a series two seventy nine by Rosemary. Um, just kind of putting this in. I do have the op opportunity to use my paint scraper if I need to, which I probably will if I'm going to try to do these spots. I don't know how far I'm going to get on this, folks, and I'm being very honest with you. <laughs> I'm just kind of just kind of doing this, and we'll see how long I actually get to paint. Um, I might have had this little the little muzzle, not muzzle. That's not the right word. Um, the front of this fish's face a little bit um, long, almost almost uh, um, salmon-like. It's, it's not a salmon. I mean, a salmon is a trout, I guess, but this is not. I've got to change this up a little bit because, you know, sometimes I just do a little sketch and I, I'm not really being um, necessarily uh, accurate to the actual fish. I'm mixing in a little bit of that... Um, Yellow Lake, and a little bit of the brown that I had down that uh, raw umber. And I see some, all these neat little golds in here. And I'm moving this eye a little bit more forward and a little bit up. 
So sometimes a sketch is merely a suggestion for me. Um, so if I seem a little, um, you'll see that I, I kind of change it a little bit. And that happens a lot with me. I do see a lot of beautiful colors, just iridescence. And that's why I love painting fish. I, I haven't done it in so long. And, and it was funny because somebody recommended, said, hey, why don't you paint a fish? I'm like, ah, okay, I don't, why don't I? And that's kind of where this one's coming from. I'm trying to figure who I was talking to about this. Uh, it was just yesterday. It was one of my students, I think, that mentioned it to me. And I thought, you know, <laughs> good idea. I think, I'll do, I think I'll paint a fish. So that is what we're doing. It's funny, the reference that I'm using um, is one that I found. I have a friend that has since passed away who, God bless him, he was an awesome guy. Um, who used to give me awesome fish references. <laughs> and, um, and he fished all over, all over. He loved going out into the wilds of Colorado and um, fishing for um, cutthroat fish, um, the cutthroat bat, um, trout. But he would give me wonderful photo references um, that, you know, I, I miss my friend because he was fun to joke around with. We would have so much fun talking and um, so Tim, if you're watching, this brook trout's for you, man. This brookie's for you. And so I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of putting in basic colors that I see. And being that this is a super slick substrate, it's going to be easy for me to take paint off and you'll see what I'm talking about. So even if I just wanted to go and paint this whole fish, this kind of darker green, um, color I have here, I could, and let's just do it. And I'm, I could use a much bigger brush and create a lot more, um, you know, cover a lot more ground, <laughs> so to speak. But I am just kind of getting this in, um, and I'll be able to take more of this off. Why don't I just use a bigger brush? This could take a while. And you know, the, now I do like to use, when I'm using a, a slick substrate like this, it does help to have softer brushes. Um, and I'm trying to see which one I have that's easy to get to. Oh, we'll just use this one, we'll try this one. I'm gonna switch over to a long flat, it's an evergreen. It may be too coarse, but we'll see. No, it's, it's doing okay. So if it just seems like, okay, I'm getting this in here and the belly of this fish, I'm just gonna try to make this a little smoother here. Now he, it goes up a little bit more at an angle here. And this is the thing, I try to stay as true to the species that I'm painting as I can. You know, um, he's got another little fin. So he's got the dorsal fin and he's got a rear fin here back, back in this area. And I, I'll probably give him some kind of water to be in. I won't keep him, I don't know, it'll, let's see here. This is a little bit more arched. Okay, I'm feeling a little bit better about that. Cleaning my brush off, using a little gam saw. I don't use a lot of mediums when I paint, not really. Linseed oil and uh, gam saw is about all I'm using. Uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of this bright yellow lake and it's gonna seem a little bit uh, extreme at first, but it will make sense eventually. And I'm gonna go right up to that green but I'm not gonna go through it yet. And, um, hmm. and the reason I'm doing that, I'm gonna go in with this little bit of brown and a little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of the um, brown umber. And I'm gonna blend this in a little bit. And I know, I'm gonna, you know, this brush is a little too big for what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna switch over, and I'm gonna switch over to 
This is a Michael, um, Michelle Cable. I can't even read this. It's one of the rosemary brushes. And I'm going to take this. Now, this, um, know that Mars Red is actually in a very opaque color. So, you know, if I'm moving, moving some of this paint into this, um, it's going to really be very dramatic. So I'm using this brush and I'm just kind of going in here and I'm going very lightly in here. I want the, I want the, um, oh, I'm, I might've made my little, my little brick trout really chubby. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of this in here and I'm blending these edges just a little bit. Let's see. So this is one of the tricky parts about using these slick substrates is knowing how to manipulate it into um, the rest of the, the paints. It's, it's um, because it slides around, you really have to be comfortable with the whole, um, you know, the, the blend. It's, it's a tricky, it's a, I, will, I won't lie, it is a very tricky uh, medium to, to or the substrate is, it can be quite tricky. Some of my students really hate this. Um, <laughs> hate when I have you paint on these, these uh, substrates, but it's not so bad, I promise. Okay, we got four people with me today. I'm sorry, because I can't see you um, because I'm painting. Normally when I do a live stream, my son is helping me. And it's wonderful when he can help me because he can say, hey mom, so-and-so said, <laughs> I don't have that today, so uh, apologize. Now, I'm taking a little bit of the um, Yellow Lake and a little of the um, Mars Red and just a tiny bit of Titanium White. And I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of pop this down here on this fin. And... Because I haven't done the background color yet, you know, I have to kind of be mindful of that as well. When I was a kid, and here's a story, because you know, I like to tell stories. Um, my father was an avid, he, well, he loved fish. And to the point of, we had fish tanks in our house growing up. My parents used to have a pet store at one time. They used to um, breed bettas, you know, and, um, we had always had fish tanks going, always had fish tanks going. And uh, I can remember whenever, we, whenever I had to start a new tank, I always wanted to get all the fish I could get. And you can't, right? You have to kind of, uh, you know, you've got to condition your tank a little bit. I'm taking a little ivory black and I'm putting it on the very, very tip of this brush. And I'm going to give him this interesting little stripe right here. And you always had to start with a, you know, some type of fish. And the fish that my father almost always started us out with were white clouds. Now, to me, to this day, I used to think they were boring fish. <laughs> when you're a little kid, you want all the really, you know, the really novel fishes. And, um, but my father insisted that we started with white clouds. And it's interesting, to this day, now they've become one of my favorite fish. And I think that when you look at a little white cloud, they look like little trout. They do. Now I'm putting a little white strip here, which doesn't seem to make sense since you can't really see anything around this fish. But I will, you know, I can, I can use a, you know, some kind of base color around this fish and maybe I should so you can see everything. You know, I'll, I'll suggest that he's, I don't know. I may keep it kind of dark. I may go with a dark brown around here, brownish green around this fish. So if I kind of go in underneath here, you're going to appreciate this little stripe. And I'm cutting right underneath it, just like that. And there's actually a lot more space than I hear than what I had initially put for this other fin. And I hope I didn't make my fish too chubby. I probably did. I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit more refinement here so I can create a little bit more space between this fin and that's, you know, I'm, I am painting live. I am not really, um, I'm just trying to give you guys something here. I, um, 
I have been really busy. It's this time of the year for most artists. It's the time when we have to uh, make our money for the season, right? We've got the holidays, and I've been busy doing holiday commissions, and I can't really show a whole lot of the holiday stuff because guess what? They're, they're surprises for people. And I can't be posting all that kind of stuff if I know <laughs> that I want to ruin somebody's surprise, right? All right, so I'm going to give this fish a little bit more space here before I jump into his tail. And the background color, it almost doesn't matter. But I'm just, I want to give it that interesting, I want to make this interesting. All right, so you kind of get the idea of how that little fin, it's actually a pretty big fin. It's almost as big as the dorsal fin up here. But I'm going to go a little bit lighter on this, on these ends here. Come on, so you can get this. And I'm going back in. I've basically made an orange color with the, um, um, the, uh, this is me thinking my brain trying to think here. The yellow lake and the Mars red. And it looks like I could go a little darker here. So I'm taking Mars Red, which we know is an opaque color, and a little ivory black. And it's funny, depending on who makes the paint. Sometimes ivory black is opaque, and sometimes it's semi-transparent. Um, and I'm always confused by that. So, you know, you almost kind of have to look at the tube. And I'm just giving this a little bit more depth in here. And I can always go back, folks. I can always go back. Now I'm taking a little bit of the ivory black and there's a little area right here on the belly of this fish. It's kind of dark. And when I have darks, and you know me, if, I, if I've got my, like here, my, um, I could go bring this down because this dark kind of follows the whole bottom of this belly of this fish. And so I'm going in with this ivory black and I could put my fins in afterwards. kind of goes up and goes up here. So we'll just kind of do that. And I'm just taking the end of this brush and just kind of doing these little spots, just like this. I'm just kind of suggesting it's kind of blending up into this area of the fish. Well, thank you. Somebody gave some, folks gave me some thumbs up. I appreciate you doing that. Every little bit of engagement helps me a lot. So thank you for that. Okay, so you can see I'm moving all over the place on this, but I may lighten up a little bit of the area underneath this fish with this brownish green color I'm using. And so you can see this side of the fish. So I always like to worry, you know, I worry about keeping my values too close and missing out on something. So even if I just do that, I'm going to be able to see that part of the fish a little bit better. Now I am not, I haven't fished in years. Um, my brother, Ron, is more the fisher in our family. And when my son was little, I used to try to take him fishing, mainly just for like, you know, bluegill. <laughs> He was, he, my brother, my, my son has a very tender heart and he did not want me hooking worms or any kind of, so we basically used hot dogs. <laughs> We've, we caught a lot of bluegill on hot dogs, y'all. I'm just saying, um, we would just keep it, keeping it, uh, humane, <laughs> I suppose. When you're little kids and you don't, your kids don't want to, one, hurt anything. You know what? I respect that. Um, I do. So, and I'm just kind of bringing in some of these other colors. I'm just going to leave that alone because I'm afraid I'm going to get my fish too chubby. They're not. These are very delicate small fish and I've already got this fish having pretty full body. So that might end up changing. I may end up slimming her down a little bit 
Or I may just say, hey, guess what? This is an egg laying like female that is loaded with eggs and maybe she's chunky, who knows? Uh, but I'm going to give her this other fin here. Um, I moved it back a little bit. Now, if I needed to, I can use my paint scraper and uh, get this fin in, but it doesn't look like I need to. I'm just gonna kind of put this in. Again, there's the, they have a little, that little black stripe here, followed by a white stripe. So I'll get this black stripe in and a little white stripe. And even if it doesn't seem that white at first, it will become white later. I need, it's almost like I have to have a place marker. Now, I have my student Anne is coming in today as well as uh, Reeves. And both of them are professional artists as well. And um, we're kind of at a crunch where we're trying to get some of the works to our, uh, the galleries that carry us. <laughs> and so this is also the time of the year when they probably sell the most amount of paintings. Art's one of those, it's a, it makes a wonderful uh, holiday gift, right folks? So um, this one is probably gonna be heading to North Carolina to Black Mountain. Um, and. Uh, so Steve, if you happen to be watching, this is coming your way, man. Okay. And I'm gonna go back underneath this fish just like I did before with this other color and just kind of suggest where, um, undercut that white area right there. So you can see that little fin. Again, I'm not gonna, today, I don't know how far I'm gonna get in today's painting. But I wanna give you a, you know, a rough overview of how this works for me and how I approach something like this. Now I'm gonna give, I may, I feel like I need to give this fish a little bit of, let's see here, from here on over the other fin comes over more over here. Cause I did move this over and rounded this out. So that makes sense. So this, this other fin will end up coming more over here. So in my reference, this fish is laying in a uh, fisherman's hand and he's keeping her kind of underwater. Like, so she's somewhat submerged, which is ideal. You know, you don't, you don't like to, to um, take them out and de-slime them and all these other things that's gonna cause stress to the fish if you can avoid it, especially if you're returning it to the uh, water. So. I am kind of working with what I've got here as a reference. It's a beautiful fish. It's a, and I'm just kind of making this, I'm bringing this up, which is good because it's elongating my fish a little bit, making her less chunky. Cause you know, no girl wants to be looking chunkier than she needs to be. And I, I'm, I'm calling her a girl. I don't know that she is a girl, <laughs> but she looks like a girl. Um, as far as the, you know, I, from what I remember of telling fish sex is a part, I think it is a female. I know you can tell a lot by the front of their head what type of, I'm gonna, oops. Let's go ahead and make that a little. I'm just doing that so I can see what I'm doing here. And that other fin will come down here. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to pretend my fish is under the water. I don't know. I don't want her looking. So this water, this, it would be murky. Well, it wouldn't be murky. They like clean, cold water, like in streams or brooks, <laughs> as the name would apply. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, I guess it'll be, I'll leave it to, um, the viewer's imagination as to where this fish is. Okay, but I will, I'll, I'll go back. I'll be, I'll be coming back to some of this area. Um, okay, I'm feeling better about that. Okay, so if I have her other fin, her jaw comes up. Okay, so I'm always thinking, always thinking. Now, I told you that, you know, I know this fish has a lot of little spots, lots of little spots. 
And so I can use this little, this little, um, you know, you've heard me talk about it, the Creative Mark Wipeout Tool. This is nifty. You know, I can go in here and start doing, you know, little spots in this way. I'm, I'm a little bit premature in doing that right now, but of course you want to do it when it's wet because once it's dry, it, it doesn't work. So now, like in my reference, I was telling you, I am, the man has this fish underwater in his hand. So I'm, I'm, his tail or her tail is very transparent and I can see all kinds of interesting colors, but I can't, um, I'm trying to, um, because it's in someone's hand, it's not as transparent, right? And it, it's, he even has a bracelet on and uh, I can't see for the bracelet. So I'm making it up here, folks. I'm gonna give her that. Now, I got her a little close to the edge. It's something I hate doing, but sometimes it happens when I'm painting. I'll, I'll fix it. But if I go back under here, because I wanna be able to give her all the length of her tail, and I think this is correct. I just kind of make this color in here. Oh, we have, I have a, my art studio is in downtown Kingsport. And I gotta say, sometimes we've got some crazies out there and I hate to use that word to describe some of the people that are just, you know, whether they're mental illness. I Hopefully you can't hear what's, what I'm hearing. But this man is just screaming at the top of his lung. You know, this is when I think I wanna lock my door. Just saying. Excuse me for just one minute. Yeah, he's screaming. He's 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 mad. I just locked my door, folks. You know, I don't need to have that added to my day. Um, I'm sorry that he's struggling with his mental illness. Um, oh boy, I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear that. Um. He's using the Queen Mary of all cuss words, y'all. I'm just saying. He's using the, the big one. The one you, that you use for special occasions. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. Okay. This is a family show, folks. I had to. So I'm just kind of, I'm just wanting to get a little bit of this in. And I'll see how I can. And I've got to. Sometimes I morph on a painting anyway. Anybody who's been watching me before knows that I do that. And there's another fin that comes right up here. Give it a little room, it's just very little. And I want to make sure I have enough space here for the other fin. Um, and I may shorten this back up a little bit and give it some more space. I'm filming. <laughs> well, I was, just so you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm doing a live. I'm on live for YouTube, so that's why I didn't take your, no, you're fine. I was already explaining. I said, oh, y'all, I'm going to go. I don't know how many people we got on here. We have set only. It's time to eat now. That's it. I said, well, it's, I have seven people on. That's the, you know. So here, folks, you get to meet Chance. Chance, <laughs> Chance Lawson. Uh, music extraordinaire. He's a, he's a, one of our local talents in this area. He's also my neighbor. 
Uh, he's a business owner downtown in Kingsport, Tennessee. He's got a, a great little place that you're doing your renovations on, yes, yeah? Yes, we are. We are. We'll probably be finished this evening if I have anything to say about it. Good for you. So, I'm glad you're here. The new thing. I just want to come over here. Yeah, I heard him and I thought, I'm going to have to lock the door because this yeah. guy sounds really angry. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do something about him. I, I never, you know, you never know who's. He's a new one. Yeah, but he's rough, huh? Yeah. All right, honey. See, See ya. <laughs> yeah, folks, for those who don't know, here in Kingsport, Tennessee, Chance Lawson, he's Donnie and the Dry Heavers, which is a, which is an amazing uh, band here in this area. He performs all over the place. Um, he's also my neighbor. He's my friend. And he's got his business across the street. And he's been doing some renovations and um, there we go, cutting that in a little bit more, moving this fin up a little bit. Um, so he's, he was calling me <laughs> while we were videoing and just saying, oh, he's a new one. He's a, then this guy, he was really angry. He was really cussing and making a ruckus. All right, so you see this looks like a big hot mess, but trust me, it will come along. Um, I'm just kind of giving myself, you know, I just want to be able to see where I'm at here. Okay. So I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to work on this tail back here. Now, there's a lot of interesting colors, and they all, and there's all the shiny colors and all this really fun stuff that happens back here. Um, and that is what is always the funnest part about doing stuff like, you know, paintings of fish. You get a lot of fun opportunities here. And so oftentimes I'm going to manipulate my backgrounds and my, um, the colors around this to accommodate what I'm trying to do here. So I'm looking. Oh, fish are so beautiful. What can I tell you, folks? I'm going to use a little ivory black since I've already got my wet paint in. And in this area, we're going in with the black because I already have the opaque um, Mars Red here, and I can do this. And I'm just gonna bring this in all the way down if I don't want it to necessarily mix because there's going to be some blues, believe it or not, that are shine that will be added in here. Um, so when you start picking up like I did here, you might actually pick up the red and pull it into the rest of your, your So you have to kind of keep your brush clean a little bit. Okay. And the edges of the tail have this nice black. They are, they just look, to me, the, the brook trout looks like a little jewel box. It's just so incredible, just so shiny and beautiful. Do you have a favorite fish? Now, or do you have a fish or something you'd like to see me paint sometime? Leave it in the comment section when you can. This will become a, um, a video for folks to see. I wasn't able to get a vid, you know, of just my usual YouTube videos out since I've been in the middle of a lot of other stuff. Um, and folks, FYI, if you've heard me complain in some of my other videos about getting my bathroom Finished, ha <laughs> ha, that happens next week. Timing couldn't be worse because it is the holidays. I still have a closing for my student show to, on Friday. And I've just, you know, I big, basically begged him off of starting the project until um, uh, after Friday. So they're starting on Monday. And with that said, now the, here, they, there's a, like little spots and I'm not really sure yet how I'm doing this yet, but we'll get there and I'll be able to put it in because if I'm using opaque paint, I can put the spots in. And I'm just kind of trying to get this in a little bit. I just wanna get that shapes in here because I can come back and work that tail. Okay. I'm just kind of looking. Some of it is pretty intense and it's very black. So I'm going to go in here, right in here, and it goes in. And, you know, it could be the way the 
fish is holding its tail or the person's holding the fish. So know that I will be taking a break at 12 o'clock. Uh, I, I eat my lunch <laughs> and, my, and I'll uh, come back. I'll we'll see how far I get today. I'm just glad that I've got nine folks watching. There's nine folks out here watching my video and that makes me happy. I've got six thumbs up. I know you're there. I appreciate you. So you can kind of get a little bit of an idea of how you can see if you're not really familiar with painting on these super slick substrates, you gotta have to know how to have a light hand when you're painting. Uh, and by light hand, I mean, I don't put a lot of pressure on the brush, but I don't wanna leave any impasto, um, not yet, not in here. And I'm looking, there's a lot of highlights that are gonna happen. And some of this may not be able to happen until part of this is dry. We'll see, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna keep painting <laughs> until I can't paint anymore, folks, today. And I will, don't worry, I won't leave y'all hanging and saying, oh, well, that was fun, but now what do we do? Because you didn't finish the piece. I will finish the piece and I will tell you when I'm coming on to do the next session on this. I may come back today and if I am back today painting this, um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, I will be teaching students, working with students today. And sometimes, sometimes I have to be really careful about that. Um, how do I say this? Not all, well, sometimes we use more adult language than what would be <laughs> acceptable for YouTube videos. I can usually say, I can usually tell uh, one of my, tell, tell everybody we got to keep it PG, you know? Um, I try to keep it, I try to keep it PG, y'all. Um, but I can't always um, control everybody else's. You're going to think I'm terrible. And I don't want you to think my <laughs> friends are terrible. We're just human. <laughs> We're just humans, that's all. And it happens sometimes. Okay, that kind of goes up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. There's a little swishy, swishy tail. Um, and I can go in, I'm cleaning the brush off. Usually I keep um, a towel in my hand and I wipe my brushes a lot. I, I use very little um, actual paint thinner and I wipe, I'm a, I'm a wiper. <laughs> so I'm taking a, and you can see how I'm loading the brush just at the tip. I'm not using a ton of paint, right? And I just, I'm, I'm better off laying it down and reloading. Lay it down and reload. Don't try to press hard or try to, um, you know, get the most out of your brush and just start pressing harder because then you're going to start blending your paint instead of letting it sit on top. And um, this is, I would say, if there's any challenge, if you understand the opacity of paint, whether it's transparent, semi-transparent, or opaque, and learn to have a light hand. You will love working on this substrate. I do. Um, it takes some getting used to, but for some who'd really rely on layering their colors and not painting in a more direct method of painting, it can be quite a challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the lighter up here, even though in my reference, you can't see it, but remember this, this fish is laying in someone's hand and you might not be able to see it because of that. And I'm just gonna start adding straight. Um, Indian, I mean, uh, Yellow Lake to this, just right on the edges. Again, I will be able to come back and revisit. There's a lot of interesting shine in here. So I'm gonna go back in over here and I want it to be a little bit more solid. So I'm using a very light hand and that creates, it helps with making it a lot more solid for you don't see it's not so swishy from it sliding on the substrate. Okay, know that I get, get to come back and do a lot of shine on this and that's always the fun part. I still, um, I'm trying to think with the time that we have, if I, I may start concentrating a little bit more on the head for a little bit. We'll see what I can do. I, I, can, I can move around and I may have to actually scrape out all the little spots before, um, because if I don't, 
<laughs> they won't be able to be scraped off. So I'm going to lay down a little bit more uh, of an intense, intense colors and then try to do it. So even if it seems like, wow, you've gotten really dark here, Sue, um, it's, it's intended so that I can uh, scrape out my little areas of the fish to make those little bright areas. I may just go like this. And if you really look closely, there's all kinds of interesting spots and stuff. I'm not gonna sit there and go like this. Maybe I will, <laughs> maybe I can. Because there's like little, almost like foci or spots. Um, and it's kind of cool looking. I'm cleaning my brush. I'm going to put a little bit of gold into this paint here. So more of this yellow lake. Um, I'll cover those guys up. This is when I almost could use, I'm actually gonna take that down a little bit. That's a little too extreme. Start mixing a little bit of the green in there too. Actually, come on Sue, make it happen. There we go, there we go. I don't want this painting to have a lot of impasto on it thick little raised areas on this painting. Um, so I'm kind of knocking some of this stuff down. And here's where I might want to use a really soft brush. What do we have here? No, I'm looking for a little sable, y'all. Here's a, um, well, it's a red dot, which is a very, basically a synthetic sable. No, it's not doing it for me either. Oh, there it is. There it goes. I know what I'm looking to get. <laughs> I was trying to get it to be to lay down a little bit more. Okay. And it does have that little bit of a lighter. Because I know this shine is going to go along the top of this fish. So I'm very, I'm, I'm using very soft hand, very soft hand. All right, let's see here, where are we going here? And I'm wiping the brush off. Here's when um, sometimes just a little bit of linseed oil on your brush will help move the paint that's already there around a little bit. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Now there's a lot of these kind of golds and browns that's in here. And, you know, the fish have a, there's all kinds of interesting little muscles and I guess their nerves and other little things that's in here. And I'm just kind of suggesting these little bit of lines. Don't you know your nose is always going to itch when you have a brush in your hand with paint in it. So I usually end up with paint all over my face because <laughs> I'm an artist. And that's what happens sometimes. All right, I'm putting a little bit more of this in here. I added a little bit of titanium white. Um, So yes, you got to meet Chance. At least you heard Chance talking about the 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 um, homeless individual that was ranting outside. Um, if you want to hear one of Chance's songs, uh, go listen. You can hear it on Spotify or, or or any you know YouTube, whatever music place you're looking for. It's a it's called Graveyards. It's probably my favorite of his songs. Um, he's really good. Go listen to go listen to Chance. Um, he does a good job, and he works very, very hard. He's been fixing up his place across the street. He's got a neat music venue, not just for himself, but he, he, he supports other local artists, other musicians, comedians, all kinds of folks at his store, his, uh, store, his shop across the street. 
Um, so he's hoping to open up tonight. It's the Market Street Social, y'all. Go see, go, go see about it. Go see about it. Okay, I'm looking at my piece here, trying to figure out. I want. I know I want to get into the head. I'm just trying to make this so that when I, I, if I need to go ahead and cut in my little circles and stuff, I can go ahead and do it. And I can work around. Okay, so there's a line that runs the length of a fish. And I believe it's something that picks up, you know, um, you know, nerve, you know, they can feel movement, electrical impulses and things like that underwater. I think that's what it is. And I'm sure somebody knows a whole lot more about this fish than I do. So if you do, please let me know what, what these parts are called. Um, I'm bringing this over more. So I'm going a little bit more heavy with the paint because I know I'm going to um, soften it up a little bit. Again, I'm using basically, it's a little bit of brown or the, um, um, the ochre, raw, um, raw umber, excuse me. I keep calling it brown, it's raw umber, y'all. I'm going in with raw umber and hooker's green is my basic color here of my fish. I put that down, I wanna go in with the soft brush like the, uh, the red dot and just kind of tap that in. Oof, whenever I do that, it doesn't do what I want it to do. There's a, there's a fin over here and I'll get that in in a second. You know what, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna just try a little something, something. I'm gonna use, remember I said there's little tiny foci underneath the skin and I'm taking a dry, and it's one of my, it's a 278 series, it's a little older. I'm just gonna see what happens if I do this. No, it doesn't really do the foci like I want it, but if I do it lightly, you can kind of see them. Nah, it's not doing it. Not like I want it to. They're like little tiny. It's better if I do it this way, with the little end of the brush. And um, it makes a little bit more sense. So I'm letting, basically what, what I'm doing is I'm letting the background of the substrate make the texture. So I'm basically removing paint. And I want it to look like, so I'm wiping the brush off. So you can see that, so you're gonna see a little bit more of that yellow coming through. And that's okay, I like that. All right. Okay, so I have to do a lot of this to make this work. And then I will scrape some stuff off here. And it may seem like it takes a long time, but really it doesn't take that long. So I don't know, can you see what I'm doing here? I'm actually kind of removing paint. I'll probably pull that down a little bit. Some more of that gold will shine through. I don't want it, I, I want it to look a little bit more random. So move it around in a circular motion to get that little, you know, otherwise it looks like you've made spots in rows. We don't want rows of spots, trust me. And I don't have to go nuts here, but sometimes I like the nuts. Sometimes, that sounded really weird. <laughs> sometimes I like to go nuts. There's somebody getting a delivery. I think it's Blue Moon Beer coming in. Yeah. So um, my uh, student, Anne, is in this, one of the same galleries that I'm in, and my student, Reeves, is in the, uh, one of the other galleries that I'm in. And it's nice because we can all take care of each other when, you know, if we have to go to North Carolina making a trip, if one of us goes, we don't all have to go and they can all take each other's paintings. So we kind of, we swap off and Anne is planning on going, I think next week. And so that's part of the reason we're trying to get, get some works done here. Okay, I'm gonna use my little paint scraper. Yikes, I just dropped my brush. 
I'm gonna use my paint scraper and kind of suggest where a lot of these little spots are going. Um, I did mention that there's this little line that runs the length of a fish. And I'm just gonna go, just almost like I'm not really putting it in, I'm just kind of scraping it out. And um, just like this. So I'm using a, um, a broken, you know, line. I just wanted to do that because it's, it's this little, and I'm sure somebody can have, tell me what this is called, but I think it's something that helps them pick up electrical impulses. I know sharks have all kinds of little spots. Every, every fish is equipped specifically for their wonderful needs, right? Um, so what I'm doing now is just scraping off some paint. These will become spots on the fish. And some of the spots look like little, um, some of them are yellow. Um, some of them are big, some of them are little. Um, and I'll be able to put the paint in. But there's some of these spots are red with like a blue circle around them. That's part of why I think these fish are so cool. Um, they just have all this, they just look like little jewelry. I mean, and I know that there's a fin that kind of comes right from here over. And I can scrape some of that out because this is her little pectoral fin here. So I'm doing that. And I don't want to leave ridges. Um, and I have to be careful because, you know, the fish is dimensional. So the, the spots that are up on the top are going to look a little less um, intense than... And also because um, part of this fish is out of water. So I'll be able to paint these little, these little things in later. But for now, I'll go ahead and do this. That way I'll have the spots. I won't have to, I can go, I can still do this piece a la prima if I, if I want to. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens up here that I can't really see what's going on. Some of the spots are little. All right, so that's at least some spots. Okay. Now I could actually use something to drink. Where's my tea? Where is my tea? Ah, uh, yeah. So I drink <laughs> a lot of tea. I drink a lot, period. Um, I start out with uh, um, I start out drinking. Um, I have a it's a it's a green tea with ginger, with honey and cinnamon mixed in. And then I switch to iced tea usually something that has peach flavor in it. And then I, you know, so, and then I switch to ice water with lemon. So I'm drinking all day long, which is wonderful, because, you know, we should drink, all drink more. But if you're like me, that means, oh, guess what? You're going to the bathroom all day long too. And with that said, knowing I'm having my, I, I mean, I'm excited to finally get my bathroom fixed. And for those who have heard me complain, you've heard me whine about it, what's happened is the bathroom floor is starting to sink. It's been sinking, and I've been telling my landlord for the past five months, five months, y'all, that this needs to be addressed. And I was, we were almost taking bets as to who's going to fall through the, the floor first. <laughs> well, luckily that's not happened and they keep assuring me it's not that bad, but let me tell you, every time you go in there, it cracks, it creaks, it's making all kinds of weird noises. 
And there's at least an inch and a half gap between my toe mold and um, the floor. So that's, that can't be good, right? That's not good. All right, I'm taking a little bit of the, the um, Mars Red and just kind of hitting right here underneath this fin because it's pretty intense right under here. And I'm not sure if it's the actual fin, I think not. And I may actually end up having to add some cadmium. I was trying to not to, some cadmium red, but I think it would look better. I may actually imply, you know, grab some of it here and eventually, but right now I'm just kind of dotting this in here a little bit. So I like the intensity of the color. What you doing, singer, huh? My, my my poodle, I have a standard poodle for those who don't know. Singer's my good boy. He comes to work with me every day. He likes to sit in the sunshine. He's he's coming over to me and saying hi now. And he's now he's trying to gauge me to play. Now's not the time, my friend. No play, no play right now. He's a good guy. I like having him around. Okay, you're getting an idea, right? You've seen this. Now there's a really intense yellow here. And it probably can only be achieved if I add cadmium. <laughs> I'm always trying to avoid it, but folks, dang it, I love it, I love it so much. So, I am going to put down some cadmium yellow to our palette. You see me popping some down right here. I'm using, this is Blue Ridge, cadmium yellow light. And I am going to grab a little bit of Blue Ridge Cadmium Red Light. Because dang it, there's just nothing like a good cad. Just saying. I like it so much. I like it so much. I like it for its opacity, its intensity. And Blue Ridge makes a really nice paint. And Blue Ridge paints, uh, oil colors, are made right in Asheville, North Carolina, which is close to where I live. So I like that. I like that I can support a local. All right, so I mixed a little bit of the cad yellow with the, the lake, the yellow lake. And I'm popping it in there. And I know it looks really extreme, but don't worry, you know, I'll blend it. So I'm wiping the brush off and I'm actually pulling this in and just, so I'm leaving it alone in the center of the brush. I mean, the center of the painting, just working the edges. And actually, I need some of the cad red in here because, oh goodness, it looks like it really wants some cad red in there. Just a little bit. And then I can hit the edges again, blend it in a little bit. What you doing, Sam? So knowing how to have a light hand really, really does help. And that's what I'm working here. I'm trying not to have an impasto situation. <laughs> it sounds like an impasto. We have an, a, folks, we have an impasto situation. That sounds really funny to say that. Folks, understand, I'm probably the biggest goober you'll ever meet. If you, if you haven't met me already, <laughs> I'm kind of a dork. I hope, I hope you're good with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I need to kind of work on that little fin. And that fin has some interesting stuff going on in it. And I'm going to grab a little bit of um, King's Blue and just kind of play in with that. You see how that just kind of lightens things up? It just makes it go crazy. I like that. There's actually a little bit of purpley color. I'm just gonna take a little cad, red, and king's blue. See if I can't get that kind of really interesting purpley color in there. A little bit of titanium white, yeah. Right underneath here, it just makes this. And I probably will go underneath this with them. Because her little fin is kind of, you know, again, remember it's, There's people outside my studio. And I, I had the door locked when I thought I, that um, man was out there and he was kind of, singer, no. Uh -uh. 
he, he takes a very serious job of protecting his mom here at the studio. Okay, so right underneath there, I'm going in with a black and I'm just kind of dis, kind of, uh, it's kind of like a little bit of a delineation and I'm gonna go back in with the black and then put some cad red underneath it because that's what that looks like to me. So I've got the black and then I'm going right in there with the cad red. So it's almost like the fin sitting on top of that. Because it is, it's, it's, it's coming out from that part of the fish. Here we go. Now we'll go back in there with this right here. And that makes sense for me. Okay, so we're starting to see that that little fin is just kind of sitting right there. And there's gonna be detail where um, I can't do it all right now, but I'm cutting in underneath that fin, trying to make it look like you can see that, you know, it's almost like fingers that if it's, it's folded up, but if you opened it up, it would look like this. There's little, you know, like spines or whatever in those fins, you know? I'm just kind of soften this up with a little bit of the browns. Golds, just pop in little dots of color. Okay, that head. Let's see what we can do with that head in the last, we probably have maybe about 10 minutes to paint for now. Um, like I said, I will come back, paint some more. All right, so there's this, the gill area, the gill plate. And how far is that from this fin? It's pretty far. We're going to move this over a little bit. Um, and the whole construction of a fish is pretty fascinating, I think. I'm kind of a weirdo. But I like to see how they're put together. Um, it's They're just fascinating. I don't know. I like fish. What can I say? I Because in some ways, they're something I don't really engage with very much and perhaps that's why I'm fascinated by them. That's my science geekiness coming out and, and I'm taking a little bit of, um, eh, I don't think that's the right color. I'm taking king's blue and a little tiny bit of green and I'm going in behind this. Oops, my glasses, let's come back here. Ish. My thing timed out on it, y'all. I gotta get my picture up. So for those who don't know, I do paint with a, I do paint with a um, monitor by my, by my easel, and that's what I use to, as my reference. And sometimes it times out on me. So yeah, that's me. So I'm going in here with this white, and there's all kinds of interesting. You know, it's kind of like the underbelly of the fish, so to speak, but um, I'm trying to make it all make sense here. Remember, I didn't paint everything in here, and I know there's like little, little spots that kind of go in there. <laughs> and no, again, and it's hard because I can't... Um, um, edit this right now. To, to enlarge this for you. But what I'm doing is I'm taking this light color and going into this and just putting little flecks of color in this black. And just putting that in because it kind of blends into that a little bit. And there's kind of a, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that green and the blue and a little bit of ultramarine, and suggest that there's a shadow right underneath this, like that. So what I could do is grab this other color and go right underneath this so it makes a little bit more sense. 
And we may be stretching the fish out a little bit, which I have more room over here than I did down here. And this is, folks, this is, this is what happens when I just do thinking, oh, I just need to do a little fish for YouTube and, and I'll just go ahead and, yeah. It, it, it was not as probably well thought out as it should have been, but you know, sometimes that's the fun stuff. It's what I enjoy doing. Hell, I don't like to plan everything. Do you? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> Leave in the comment section. Let me know what you think. I, I um, don't always plan everything. Sometimes I just paint something that's just moving me and I just jump in. And I do admire artists that, who um, what's the word I'm gonna use? You know, they orchestrate every piece that they're just so thoughtful in their processes of, of doing a painting um, that they just, you know, they know where they're going. They, you know, they may have been thinking about one painting for weeks and that happens with me sometimes. I'm not gonna lie, that, that does happen to me sometimes. But uh, I, I, I do paint, um, you know, Right, you know, just whatever comes to mind. And today, I didn't know I was going to be painting a brook trout. It just came up as a suggestion by one of my students. Said, "Hey, you know, you should really paint some fish." <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's paint some fish. And that happens sometimes. Okay, so where was I here? So there's a lot. I'm going to use a little bit more of this color since I've got it out. So we have this little area here. Then there's going to be a little black area following, and then over here where the jaw, there's another area here that has that color. So you can see I'm probably lengthening this out just a tad. And what do we got here? Let's go in with this little bit of this greeny black sole where I kind of did this here. There's an area here that goes underneath. And, hmm, here's that. Now let's see. I'm trying to see everything in this little fish's mouth. Um, there's a lot of blue here, blue, black. So I'm kinda, let's see, there's a part that comes down here um, there, her mouth is like this. It'll make sense when it's all said and done, I hope. <laughs> I hope. Um, there's another part that comes out this way and meets up with this. So her head is going to be a little bit bigger. We're getting it. She's got a neat gold lip area here. And it shaped this let's see that goes here to that but I know it's not longer than that this part of her nose comes up a little bit more okay so she's very dark on the top I'm gonna go ahead with the ivory black for now Her eye will move again. Her eye is like here, I think. Uh, this part of her is in the water and that's why it's so dark. And I just wanna make her, I don't know how to make sense. And this kind of goes at an angle and then goes down. And it kind of goes around this way. It's just such a unique, unique look. Wow, I actually have nine people watching me right now. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. And again, if I may not be able to answer your questions at this moment because I can't see them. Um, since I'm working alone today, 
but please feel free to leave them in a comment section. This will become a, um, a video that's, um, that I'll be able to answer your questions. It'll be a regular video, if that makes sense. Probably not. Sometimes I don't articulate as well as I should. Okay, I'm looking, I'm looking. So sometimes what I do when I'm not really certain about where to go with a piece, um, I go around it. And then usually, so like for the eye, I know I've got all this beautiful gold coming in here and looking where things, where, where there's bright areas right underneath this part of the eye. I can make the eye will come into focus by painting all the things around it. Does that make sense? So I don't have to worry about it. It takes care of itself. Like this part's gonna come up a little bit more. Um, over the, uh, ooh, that's a little bit too much maybe. I think that's where that goes. And then this is going to be a little bit, I'm using a little bit of burnt, burnt sienna with the uh, yellow lake. It's almost like there's a triangle. I'm always looking for shapes. I'm always looking for the abstract sometimes. Um, it helps me see the other things. To, I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but my brain is a weird thing. How's that for an answer? There's all kinds of interesting colors here, but we were, we're gonna start getting into reflections that I can't get into today, folks. I might try to get into it later today. Um, I will try my best to do that for you guys. Um, okay, now this little... It always makes me sad when I see fish that are out of water. I know I've gotten, I've gotten really soft in my old age, y'all. Um, I really, really have. I know as a kid, I used to go fishing, not even thinking about it. Um, I remember, um, and if my old friend Roger Manley happens to be listening here, he and I would go night crawling the night before, get all the worms that we needed for the next day. We had horses back then and we would get on our horses and we might be gone all day. <laughs> you know, back in the day, your parents didn't worry about where you were. Not that they were concerned. It's just, it was a different time. Right. And I, we would be gone all day on our horses, never thinking about, you know, we'd just be gone and we would fish. And if we were hungry and we were like out, we're like, we would got to fish and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> we'd make a campfire, we'd eat it. We thought we were so cool. Um, it's a different time, right? And I haven't gutted a fish and I can't even tell you when. And uh, I don't even know that I'd want to. I'm not, I am just saying, I'm just being really honest because I don't know that I could. I just haven't done it. Um, so isn't that funny? All right, so I'm gonna give the little edge here to this until I figure out the rest of this fish's face. <laughs> fish face. Gotta think of the fish face here. So there's an interesting color because of the reflective light. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. Like I said, this fish is sort of semi in the water. Now we do have this amazing dorsal fin um, that will be in this area. And I may cut out some of the area just because I kind of got a little nuts here. So if it goes up, this is coming off, basically. I might try to get that in, and this is very sleek here. This fin is over here. So let's get that fin in. And I'm cleaning my brush, and there's a lot of these nice, interesting goldy yellows in here. So I'm gonna go light at first. And then, we're gonna go in, let's see, let's use a little CAD with, yeah, that's good. CAD red with Mars red. Some of the two nice fun opaque colors. 
and it gets really dark down here. And I'm trying to meet its back, her back here. Um, okay, I don't wanna get too nuts here. There's a lot of neat black spots that I can't really do yet. Um, I'm going to bring this in down here, a little bit warmer. Cleaning my brush off. Wiping, 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 wiping. And I'm pushing it out a little bit. And if you can see what I'm doing, because I'm working on the wet substrate, I can do that. Um, what that does is it, it um, the direction that I'm pushing this way pushes this dark paint out of the way and lets me put this other color in its place. And that's, if you know how to manipulate your substrate and your brushes and your brush angle or knowing how you know you're using um the opaque colors because you heard me say that you know that i'm i grabbed those two colors because they're opaque and they're so that i'm able to get those edges so that you get a slight blend can you see what i'm doing here it's kind of cool it's really actually very cool all right, folks, that means it's 12 o'clock. Now I will be getting a phone call and I will be going off to eat my lunch. Um, I'm gonna just, so you, I'll try to come back and paint, but I do have a student coming at one and uh, know that I will finish this with you guys. I'm not gonna jump ahead and I don't think I'm gonna jump ahead. Um, I may tell my uh, student that we're going to have to, I'm going to be doing this. So if you don't care, I may be stopping and starting and, um, you know, you'll hear regular conversation that happens here in the studio. So be mindful. <laughs> that kind of happens here. So we'll jump back into our fish here in just a little bit. Okay. So I'll see you in a little bit. Be, stay tuned. Know that I'm coming back on. And hopefully if you're paying attention, I'm thinking it should be probably in an hour. So come back in an hour and watch me paint more on this fish. And hopefully we'll be able to, I'd love to think I can finish it today. We'll see. So until we get back, I'll see you in a little bit. All right. Thank you. I'm going to see if I can do this without, how do I stop this thing? Do I do that? And I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 